To be successful in gymnastics, lots of different components of fitness are required. If you ask most gymnasts or coaches what components of fitness are required for gymnastics, strength and flexibility would spring to mind immediately. Although strength and flexibility are essential, endurance is a very important, if a little overlooked aspect of competitive gymnastics too. Endurance is a generic term, meaning the ability to do something repeatedly without getting excessively fatigued. The umbrella of endurance covers two main types of fitness, cardiovascular endurance and muscular endurance. Cardiovascular endurance refers to how efficient your heart and lungs are at getting oxygen into the body to fuel continuous exercise, whereas muscular endurance refers to the ability of the muscles to cope with repeated contractions and to be able to cope with the burn of lactic acid accumulation. Both are important for getting through full routines on all gymnastics apparatus with the exception of vault, as it is over in seconds. This tutorial will be focused predominantly on building cardiovascular endurance for floor exercise, which is arguably the event which requires the greatest levels of stamina. Cardiovascular endurance itself can be split down further into two main types of fitness, aerobic and anaerobic endurance. Anaerobic endurance is the body's ability to do intense exercise for a short burst, whereas aerobic endurance is associated with lower level, less intense activity for greater periods of time. Generally, any activity that lasts less than 30 seconds relies almost entirely on the anaerobic energy system, whereas any activity lasting more than a few minutes relies mostly on the aerobic system. The extreme examples are a short distance sprint, such as a 100 meter sprint, which is more than 99% anaerobic, and the opposite end of the scale is a long distance run, such as a marathon, which is above 99% aerobic. Most events, which are somewhere between the two, such as a gymnastics floor routine, rely quite heavily on both systems. Depending on whether it is men's or women's gymnastics, a floor routine typically lasts between 70 and 90 seconds. So we can think of the first part of a floor routine being fueled mostly by anaerobic endurance, with the aerobic system kicking in and starting to take over towards the end of the routine. In terms of duration and intensity, a gymnastics floor routine is comparable to being somewhere between a 400 meter and 800 meter run. In the running community, a 400 meter run is considered the longest of the sprints, whereas an 800 meter race is considered the shortest middle distance event, which fits in with the idea that a floor routine is part aerobic and part anaerobic. In order to maximize routine endurance potential, it's important to train both anaerobic and aerobic endurance. In my opinion, there are three main layers to address. Firstly, there is the aerobic base layer. Next, there is anaerobic training. And finally, there is specific routine endurance. Each layer builds into the next and needs to be developed in the right order. If you have very little aerobic endurance, for example, you're unable to run on a treadmill for 10 minutes, then there would be very little point in working on specific routine endurance because you won't be able to cope with the intensity of the exercise. However, once a base layer of aerobic fitness has been laid down, your body will be more able to cope with more intense anaerobic training. Again, once you're acclimatized to general anaerobic training, your body will be more prepared for intense routine specific work. When you are aiming to improve physical conditioning in any way, it is a mistake to work too specifically too early. Once the foundations have been laid, the tower can be built more sturdily. Generally, intense fitness work happens in preparation for a competition. Fitness adaptations start to show quite soon after regular training begins, even after as little as a couple of weeks. However, aerobic baseline training needs to begin well in advance of competition so that there is time to build through anaerobic and routine specific fitness, leaving a few weeks to spare to practice full routines in time for the event. Because cardiovascular adaptations are easily obtained, they are quickly lost too, so it is important to maintain all three types of endurance during a competition build-up as well as during off-season, altering intensity and focus where needed. An example of an effective protocol would be to do aerobic and anaerobic maintenance once per week each during off-season, then begin more intense cardiovascular work roughly 12 weeks away from a competition. The first three weeks would be mostly aerobic endurance sessions three times a week. The next phase would be anaerobic sessions two times a week with once a week maintenance of aerobic fitness. Weeks six to nine would be heavily focused on routine specific fitness with some general anaerobic and aerobic maintenance. And then in the three weeks before a competition, generic physical preparation should be minimized to reserve as much energy as possible for actual full routines. 
Here are a few exercises which I have found very useful to develop well-rounded endurance for floor during competition preparations. Lots of elite gymnasts recently have started to use the training mask to help build extra endurance. It's by no means essential, but can be a good addition to your training. The idea behind it is that it restricts the amount of oxygen you can breathe in to simulate altitude training, which has been known for many, many years to improve fitness. In theory, the training mask should force your body to become more efficient at using the oxygen it has. But research has not conclusively proven that the training mask actually improves fitness. However, that doesn't mean that it's a complete waste of time because what it almost certainly does is improve the strength of the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm, meaning that you can breathe more deeply, which in turn reduces your rate of perceived exertion when you take the mask off again. That is, when the inspiratory muscles are strengthened, breathing may feel easier for a given workload, which means that the same workload feels less intense and will allow you to carry on for longer. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it useful. If you did, please make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel, give me a thumbs up on the video and share it on social media with anybody else who you think might find it helpful. For even more videos and regular updates, make sure that you check out my Facebook page and my other training YouTube channel. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them below and I will make sure that I get back to you and do what I can to help. Thank you very much, hopefully see you again soon.